This is downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where today Heinz Field, home to Pitt, will host the second game of the young season. In town to challenge the Panthers are the Black Bears of Maine, coming off a win in their opener. College football on ESPN3, presented by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. Welcome to a super September Saturday in downtown Pittsburgh, the battle between Maine and the University of Pittsburgh. We are inside Heinz Field. Happy to welcome you and have you along this Saturday. I'm John Sanders, along with Christian Foyer, who is an All-American in Colorado, also has a pair of Super Bowl championship rings in his collection. Both teams winning their opening game. Let's talk first of all about Pittsburgh. They struggled in the first half. Yeah, they get, got up to a slow start, but they started going when Ray Graham started going. Now, this is a run-based play action and pass offense, but the success of this offense is due to the running game. Now, Ray Graham finished with 29 rushes, 201 yards, and three touchdowns. If they're going to have the same success last week, they need to give him the ball a lot. I'm thinking 25, 30 touches. They might to get him involved in that passing offense as well this afternoon. He is the Big East Offensive Player of the Week, but a special teams player of the week in just about any conference would play for Maine, and his name is Trevor Costin. Trevor Costin had a great game last week. He ended with five rushing, five returns for 130 yards, including a touchdown at 74 yards. He also had two picks. Now, if Maine wants to stay in this game, they're going to need big plays by their best players. Trevor Costin has to come up today. And obviously outmatched coming into the game, they're going to have to play perfect football. Pitt is bigger, they're stronger, and they're faster. Everybody has to play well. It is home game number two for the Panthers, who share this stadium with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The cheerleaders, the fans, the players, the mascots, everybody is ready to go. We've got the kickoff for the Black Bears of Maine and the Panthers of Pittsburgh straight ahead on ESPN3. Bright, sunny day, Maine against Pitt, game number two for both teams. The weather, well, it's much better than it was a week ago when it was in the mid-90s at kickoff. Right now it's 69 degrees, a little bit of breeze, and we actually do have some sun right now. Here's the head coach, Jack Cosgrove, who has been there for 19 seasons. He went to school there, and uh, Christian, he just kind of stayed after that. Yeah, you know what? Uh, when you have, if you have a good thing, why leave? Uh, he knows this is going to be a big challenge for his team today. Uh, he's looking for an error-free game. On dish will kick off for the Black Bears, who in their opening week defeated Bryant 28-13. They built a 28-0 lead and then kind of put it in cruise control. Corey Davis will be the deep back to receive the kick, and we are underway here on ESPN3. Davis from the eight. Tried to get outside, and they'll run him out of bounds near the 24-yard line. 16 yards on the return. Tino Sinceri, who overthrew some people early in that game last week, hoping he can correct that this afternoon. He's going to need to settle down right off the bat. Last week, the coaches talked about how everyone was too hyped for that first game. Let's see how this first drive goes. You can see the slot back is Hubie Graham. He is a tight end slot back, and Sinceri's in trouble, and down inside the 20. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the University of Pittsburgh. And you see the skilled players. Keep your eye on Mike Shanahan. He's a big one, an excellent receiver, had five catches last week. And on the offensive line, Ryan Turnley, just his second start at center, and he played well last week, no bad snaps. Inside handoff to Graham. 25, cuts it back and spins his way close to the 30. The tackle by McMillan, who had 11 tackles a week ago. He picks up the first one this afternoon. Good yardage on that play from Graham. You know, this is the this is what they do best, this zone read offense, which Graham is great at running. You're going to see a lot of this today, but they don't want to start with the sack. Well, he picked up 11. He had 11 of those yards back. But it's still third down and about four. Sinceri sets, fires, passes, caught at the 40-yard line. Well, the Panthers will pick up their initial first down. Street made the catch, and he zipped that football in there that time. You know, the, the key to a good quarterback is making sure that he takes his time and takes what the offense gives him. And this is what Coach talks about, Coach, Coach Graham, trusting the system, trusting the offense. Costin was there defensively, but not in time. Graham will get five. 
Let's take a look at the Black Bears defensive set for this afternoon. There are the men along the line. Farnor, a very good player. Linebackers. Aki had a good game last week for Maine in their victory. And we'll get back to the secondary in a minute. Passes dropped in the flat. It's an incomplete pass. It was intended for Sadler. Now the defensive secondary, and we've already touched on the play and the game that Costin had last week, but McMillan was their leader in tacklers, even though he's a strong safety. Third down, Third down coming up for Pittsburgh, about five yards to go. Sinceri. And that's incomplete. Intended again for Sadler. Givens knocked it down. And so the Panthers do pick up one first down, but now they'll have to kick it away. Well, last week they had 43 plays in the first half. They only came away with seven points. We talked about how sluggish they started. Tino Sinceri missing a bunch of throws downfield. You want to get into a rhythm with this fast tempo offense. And guess who's back to receive the kick? Let me guess. Number three, <laughs> Mr. Costin. Yaklik will handle the punting. That's some pretty good rush that time. They're going to make sure that they corral him and don't let him go downfield. You're going to see the front line. And we've got a flag. They ran into the kicker. Well, well, that's a break for the Panthers, and that's the kind of mistake that the young men from Orono can't make. Yeah, you know, into the kicker. Into the kicker. Defense. Defense. Number 46. Number 46. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty. It's still fourth down, according to the official. Uh, that was, uh, I'm not sure you can really call that. No. I mean, he <laughs> did run into the kicker, right? Uh, so, yes, he is right that way. But, well, what's fortunate for them, it was uh, they still get the ball back. And the fans want him to go for it. But they will not, so Yaklik will kick again. Costin is deep, standing inside his own 20. And now the Panthers are going to talk it over. Yeah, maybe they'll think it through. You know, they're going to take a 30 second timeout right here to make a decision early on. And I know the head coach, Coach Graham, would love to put some early pressure on this team. And we are back with 13.09 to play, and the Panthers will go for it on fourth and short right at midfield. They have inserted Jubilato, the fullback, to block for that guy, Graham, who puts his head down, and I think he gets into Buffalo territory. It'll be a first down. Awfully close, though. Oh. It's the 49-yard line of the Black Bears. The Panthers now go with two tailbacks, Graham and Brown, in there. That's about a five-yard pickup. You know, Zach Brown gives them a great opportunity to do a bunch of different things when he's in the backfield number four. He can run the ball. He can be a lead blocker. They're not going to flex him out too much, but it gives that defense more to worry about. He scored the first touchdown of the year, and there's a reverse for the Panthers. Sinceri out to block, first down and more as they get inside the 35-yard line. That's Ronald Jones, who can also see some playing time on the kick teams, and he'll pick up a big first down for the Panthers. Misdirection, trying to get Maine thinking about the run. They give it to number 14, the freshman, Ronald Jones. Does a nice job for a rookie. Tenth play of the drive coming up. And the direct snap that time to Graham, who will get down to about the 31-yard line before he's dropped on the play. Throwing a little uh, wildcat action in there, keeping Sinceri in. I'm sure, uh, Maine wasn't prepared for that one. They did a good job stopping it. Held him to a gain of three. Second down. 11.45 remaining. First quarter just underway. Play action. Sinceri looking right, throwing right. The catch is made. A diving catch made by Street, Devin Street. You know, if uh, Sinceri throws this to him so Street doesn't have to fall down, he actually just can almost walk into the end zone, but it was a nice catch by Street, who played well as their deep threat. 21-yard gain. Sinceri throwing on the run. And down at the five goes Graham. Hubie Graham, the guy that plays H-back, plays out of the backfield, plays tight end. He 
he made the catch there. Yeah, he's going to be all over the field. He's going to be flexed out in the backfield. Him and Brown play the same role when they're in the backfield. It is second down. And five. They can get a first without a touchdown. Motion man. Oh, he got very close to it. The Panthers signal touchdown, but the referee does not. And it was Cole, Michael Cole, number 99, who had a chance to stop that play. And he was able to fight his way down for a first and goal. You know, good runners, they, they never get stopped by the first guy. They just keep working. And you see everybody jumping on him, trying to stop him. He leans forward, almost gets it in there. This will be the 14th play of this opening drive, aided by the running into the kicker penalty. No signal yet. There's the signal. So the Panthers strike first on their opening possession. That means that they have now scored the last five times they've had the football in this young season. Greg Graham had three TDs last week. He gets number one this afternoon. The fullback come in. They actually missed their blocks. I'm not sure if he actually even got in. The, his head crossed the goal line, but I don't know if his if the ball did. I mean, it's... And the player walking off the field now for Buffalo as we come back live is Ryan Nanny. I don't know if they... Uh... Ryan Nanny is actually in his sixth year with this program at Maine because of injuries and red shirts. He's playing for his sixth year. And that's not a good sign. And now the Panthers will line up for the point after with ten and a half minutes to play. Harper. For the PAT, Yaklik will hold. And you go back. The pick kick is no good. I'll tell you what, so far on the season, Chris Harper, who missed two field goals last week, now misses an extra point. Graham got the TD. Six. Panthers take it. 74 yards, excuse me, 76 yards on their first possession. Took four and a half minutes off the clock. Missed the extra point. And they have the lead 6-0 now as they prepare. And, of course, that whole drive, Christian, was aided by the running into the kicker penalty. Those are the things that Cosgrove said he doesn't need to happen if they're going to stick in this game. And I tell you what, on that last touchdown, Jerome McMillan is kicking himself. He had 11 tackles last week, and he was unblocked and couldn't make the play. Boone and Walker are deep. This is Boone with it. A little stutter step across the 20, down at about the 23. Let's go back and take a look at exactly what Christian is talking about. Good lead block. But Jerome McMillan, unblocked, trips him up. I'm not sure if the ball even crossed the plane, John. I know his head did, but I'm surprised they didn't challenge that. At least take another look at it. Watch where the ball lands. His head's across the plane, but the ball is behind the line. But it was ruled a touchdown. There was no review. So Warren Smith, a transfer from Iona in the backfield along with... This is Brown, and he'll get maybe a yard, and that's about it. Let's take a look at the offense for the Black Bears. We talked about Brown, who had almost 150 yards rushing last week, running behind that... Offensive line that features probably their best player on the line is Chris Howley at right guard. Officially no gain on the play. Second down 10. We have 10 minutes left in the opening quarter. So Maine is going to do this pre-snap read. Every time they come up to the play, they're going to check and see what the defense does. Once the defense shows their hand, they're going to call their play. Four wide outs in this formation. They've got some blitz. excellent receivers. Setting up his session in the backfield. Here's a flag. And the pass is caught. And that's first down yardage across the 35 by Pushon Brown, who will await the penalty, which is thrown back at the line of scrimmage. Excellent job of Smith. Backside pressure. Little formation. Getting rid of it. That was a plant screen. Five players though, so. in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Second down. Again, now you have two penalties. That killed momentum. Let him score in the first series. Now you have a nice little screenplay that picks up some yardage, and you got to get back. Now you're at second and 
Jeff McConaughey is our referee, and the crew is from the Big East. So they had the first down out across the 30-yard line, close to the 35, but it all comes back. So Warren Smith who runs the ball a lot more than Sinceri ran it 14 times last week. A little bit of a delay handoff right there as Brown powers his way up the middle across the 20 to the 22. Price and Gordon, a couple of the linebackers. And you talk about searching for the right combination at that linebacker spot. On my depth chart, Christian, I have 12 guys. Yeah, there. last week they rotated eight different guys in that front seven. They're trying to find out who works best in what situation. And position. They got the five yards of the penalty back, so they're looking at third and ten. Smith came from Iona to Maine after Iona dropped football. Runs away from pressure and throws it away. Threw it right into his own bench. So the Panthers hold. Well, that's what he wants to do. You know, a coach talks about living to fight another day. If you don't have what you're looking for, don't do anything stupid. Do not throw an interception. He has nothing. It's a coverage sack. He's getting pressured. He just throws it out of bound. Now let's play field position. Well, it was Alexi who had that big 47-yard interception return last week to turn the game around against Buffalo, who was applying the pressure that time. Waxman to kick. Randall Jones is deep for Pittsburgh. Another flag. Jones fields it at the 47-yard line and gets into main territory. Well, let's await the penalty call. With a player. Illegal shift. Offense. Two players in the motion. At the snap. Penalties decline. First down. So the Panthers will take the field position as the clock reads 8.09 to play in the opening quarter. One of the things you look at, the size of the line, offense versus defense, and the tail of the tape certainly favors the University of Pittsburgh. There's a lot of big boys in that pit offensive line. and The defensive line for Maine, and they're going to have to be scrappy. They're going to have to move around. They're not going to let these guys get an even fit on them so they can push them around. Three wide receivers split to the right side in this formation. First and ten for Pittsburgh at the 44-yard line of Maine. Sinceri throws on the run, completes the pass. It's going to be just short of the first down. Going to Shanahan. That's Mike. I talked about him being a good possession receiver. He had five catches last week, a career high for him. Hey, look at the offensive line. Giving him lots of time on the sprint out. Easy pitch and catch. Shanahan. Nice tall 6'5 receiver slash tight end. Graham got through the middle, kind of stumbled a bit, and then regained his balance and picks up a first down at the 25. Well, that's a luxury to have, isn't it, in this offense, a guy like Graham? you got to have a guy that can run. This, everyone thinks that the spread offense is all about passing. It's all about running. you got to have a good running game or nothing opens up. And Siri throws it away. That's what you're looking for from him also. Nice coverage coverage uh, by Maine. Not long ago, he only had two receivers going out. You don't have the check down. You don't have to throw. Just throw it away. It's all about trusting your offense, trusting your ability, trusting the system. Second down 10 from the 25 of the Black Bears. That's Sadler in motion. And there's nothing up the middle that time. Good hit applied by Bootman. So this is a this is going to be a victory. They can get they they can get Pitt off the field on third down. Let their field goal kicker come out there again. Just going to play zone. Sinceri is going to be dragged down from behind for a loss. Like he had somebody open briefly, but he couldn't finish it off. And Alston, the defensive end, made the tackle. Looks like Zach Brown. He wanted to go to Zach Brown, but it might be that he missed the missed the read, went the wrong way, starting out. He turned in, couldn't throw it to him. Now Kevin Harper is going to get another chance. He's missed two field goals last week. Mixed the extra point today. 
Kicked one out of bounds last week. He needs some confidence. This is a 44 yard attempt. He's got plenty of leg. It's been the direction that's been a problem, and that is his first field goal of the season. That's got to feel good. And he is happy jumping around. You know, kickers are about the most mental guys on the team. In that situation, that's going to make him feel better. Look at him. Knocks it through from 44. Panthers add to their lead. Panthers get their first field goal of the season, make it a 9-0 lead with 6.02 remaining here in the opening quarter. So the Panthers will kick off. They've had a huge edge in yardage so far. Harper will kick off. The deep man you saw is Roosevelt Boone. Also Walker back there, number 42. Boone at the goal line. Spins away across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. And let's talk about the pressure that Pitt so far has put on Smith, the quarterback for me. Well, Pitt's not going to make it easy on him. Greg Williams flushing Smith out. And then Chaz Alexley getting after it also, making him throw the ball out of bounds. So far, Maine has not completed, a, has not converted a first down. And Pitt's doing it with their front four. Well, let's see what Warren Smith can do as they have the ball at the 22 yard line. Brown is the lone setback. Like the Panthers, they go out of the shotgun. Perillo, the tight end, was in motion. Smith throws and the catch is made across the 25 to near the 28 yard line. Derek Johnson, who caught three passes last week, snags that one. It is second down, about four. A little motion there from the tight end again. Brown looking for some, excuse me, not Brown, it's Walker looking for some place to go, and there was no place. Juan Price in there to make the tackle. Juan Price, freshman, getting some playing time. He plays that Panther linebacker position. The coaches talked about getting him more time. Doesn't get fooled by the play, comes in and makes a nice tackle. Now, Pitt's coordinators talked about being more aggressive on receivers and being putting more pressure on the quarterback. Third down and seven. Got a four receiver formation right now for Warren Smith. And again, feeling pressure and gets out of it. Lindsay leading the way and finally dropping him back at the 15 yard line. That's the problem. You've got to give the quarterback a little time. They only rush three guys. Everybody else dropped into coverage, just playing zone, and there's nowhere to go with the ball. Lindsay takes on two guys, recovers, gets off the ground, and makes the tackle. That's what they're looking for in that Panther linebacker position. Someone who can play the run and still get after the quarterback when he's rushing. Waxman will handle the punting. Jones is deep, standing back at his own 44-yard line. Nice kick. Fair catch. He'll bring it down at the 48 of Pittsburgh. So again, good field position, Christian, for the Panthers. Yeah, the field position is one of those things where you're playing with a short field against a, 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 a smaller and slower team. Uh, you've got to take advantage of every situation. See the slow start for the Panthers a week ago, but so far this afternoon, so good if you're Pittsburgh because you've scored a touchdown and a field goal in two possessions. And there's the head coach, Todd Graham, who one time was an assistant down the road at West Virginia. 
Now their field position. They started their first drive from the 24 in the main 49 and now from their own 48 yard line and there'll be nothing there. It's interesting. It's interesting uh, situation with Graham. You know, as a new coach, you figure you're going to have to be charged with changing a losing culture. But Pitt won 27 games in the last three seasons. They've been in contention for the Big East title each year. Now they just need to get that next step. Graham is the guy to do that. Sincere, it's open down the middle, first down. Panthers able to complete the pass that time. Mike Shanahan does a great job of finding those little holes, finding those voids, and make those those throws easy for Sinceri. Ray Graham, a stutter step for about three to the 35-yard line. Graham is strong. I mean, when he gets hit, he just keeps going. Hakey made the tackle. Guy's jumping all over his back and he's driving his legs. Looks like he's pulling a cart. Picked up two. Second down, eight. Two, 33 to play first quarter. Sunseri feels some pressure and down he goes. Back outside the 40 at the 43 yard line. Again, it's achy. And you see him, you see that Ray Graham and Sunseri talking about the player. Looks like Graham should have ran a different route. Sinceri goes to look for it for the check down and he's not there and then he gives up a sack. Well, they got good pressure from Capella to lead the charge and then Aki put him away with the sack. Aki coming off a 10 tackle game last week in the 28-13 win over Bryant. Sinceri's pass is dropped. Incomplete. Intended for Williams. So left Williams could not hang on. Well, the Panthers will be forced to punt. Now I'd look out for the pooch punch here. This is a read. If they get the coverage that they want, they're going to go ahead and throw it. If not, they're going to kick it. Uh, they did this and twice they last week. So they didn't get what they want. Costa is going to get back there and get a chance to get this back, get a return from it. So they're going to kick it out. Not a bad job Sinceri's that time by oh, Tino Sinceri. This is a matchup of the FCS football championship subdivision against the FBS, the football bowl subdivision. And you can see Maine, eight straight years they played a Division I team, including Syracuse the last couple of years. Their big win was that one against Mississippi State in 2004. And they also had a, a close and almost win against Nebraska. That's right. Uh, that uh, Coach Cosgrove talks about and what they had to do to come, one, beat Mississippi State, and two, hang around in that game against Nebraska. And they talked about making no mistakes, punting a lot, and then hanging around and believing that you can win, and then hopefully getting some help from the other team. Session and Brown in the backfield, and Session plays wide out, plays a little tight end, plays a little H-back. It's Brown trying that right side. And the pile will push across the 10 to maybe the 12. And up number two, Pushan Brown. So Pushan Brown will pick up a couple of yards on the play. Maine's two best offensive linemen are Garrett Williams and Chris Howley. Smartest players and the strongest. If they're going to run, they're probably going to run to that side. But they got Miles Carrigan, Aaron Donald. They're going against two guys that are and KK Mosley Smith, freshman, 290, 295 pounds. Second and six. Nothing there for Brown. He was wrapped up immediately on the play by the pit defense. Hargrove got the start last week, and he's getting the start again this afternoon. He's part of a veteran group up there. He's a redshirt senior. Karajin is the same, and Alexi also a redshirt senior. So they've got 50-year guys in those spots on that defensive line. One thing Wastock did is he packed the cover filled with defensive linemen. And now timeout is going to be called by Maine. Black Bears saw something they did not like, and so quickly Warren Smith asked for a timeout. 36 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter of play. And so far, so good. I think you'd have to say a better start for Pitt 
than they had last week in that 7-3 to three halftime lead that they had over Buffalo. They're doing all the right things, but Maine is not helping themselves at all. They've had three penalties, one on special teams that extended a drive that led to a touchdown. They had one on a punt return. Two, uh, they've sacked uh, Sinceri twice, but they're not really getting any movement on that offensive line. So if I am the offense, if I'm main offense, I am going east to west to go north and south. You got to hit those quick slants, get the ball in the hands of your playmakers quick, like Buffalo did against Pitt last week. Well, that's the game we were talking about. At Mississippi State, they won at 9-7. Bulldogs did not score after the first quarter. It is third down and 10 here. You see Maine punted eight times, but hung in there and got the victory. Smith, quick out, is deflected. Pitt's done a great job of mixing up their blitzes from, from zone blitzes to just straight zone, rushing three, dropping four. You know, anything that Maine's called, Pitt has fell right into it. Jones. Now it's another field, field position battle going on. They haven't been able to move the field, move the ball past midfield. Waxman would do the putting and back deep to receive the kick once again is Randall Jones. And you can see he's standing in midfield. So they're going to get more good field position. The only time they didn't have good field position was that opening drive where they had to go 76 yards. That's, yeah, that's not, not a good help. Kick. And it's kicked by one of the Black Bears. Rolls dead inside the 25, but he actually kicked it at about the 27-yard line. So far, this might be Jack Cosgrove's nightmarish situation. Wow, they're going to spot it at the 23, but if you look at that, uh, this is not what he had in mind when he gave his pregame talk in the locker room. Absolutely Guys, not. come out fast. No mistakes, air free. Starting this drive at the main 23-yard line. Sinceri likes to look right and throw right. Completes it, making the catch is Street. He'll have a first down. Devin Street, a redshirt sophomore from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, made the catch. That was a great job by him. Working his way inside. Number 22 went outside to cover the flat, and he fit right in that hole. Quarter winding down. Sinceri on the move, completes the pass. That is Cameron Sadler who made the catch out of the pass from Sinceri, and that winds up the first quarter of play. The Panthers dominating at home in game number two. Nine nothing Panthers. They've got a touchdown on their first drive, a field goal later, and they are on top. Back with more here on ESPN3. Nine nothing as we start the second quarter of play. College football on ESPN three, presented by Sprint. It is second down and seven. The ball is spotted at the eight yard line. Sinceri with play action throws it away. Notice how often, if you watch him, he looks to the right when he's in a passing situation. I haven't seen him throw the ball left at all today. Well, the, um, it might be because uh, everybody's kind of predetermined one side. But great coverage by Maine, not, not allowing him to get out of the pocket, covering big Mike Shanahan. Out. That's where he wanted to go with the ball. Now Sinceri will roll. Pressure from the backside. Runs into his own blocker. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Throws it to the end zone, almost picked off. And you know who almost got his third of the year. That's Costin was right there. Yeah. This is what Todd Graham does not want him to do. This is a situation when you're running around, you're trying to find something, running into your lineman. It's like the Keystone Cops out there. No, doesn't have it there. He's finally going to try and throw it to the outside. Probably best just to throw it out of bounds. Harper on for a field goal hit from 44 earlier this one will be 25 you click the holder the kick is up and the kick is good 
A 25 yarder. The second of the afternoon for Harper starting to, as you mentioned, feel a little more confident now after he missed that point after. Yeah, there was one guy that wanted to get on the field the fastest. That was Kevin Harper after the, the game he had last week, kicking balls out of bounds, missed two field goals. Then he comes in and then he misses his first PAT attempt, which is probably the easiest thing to do. Then he goes ahead and makes two tough field goals. Well, Coach Todd Graham has pointed out that this squad, and a lot of them have been around for four or five years, they're playing with a new offense, a new defense, and a new kicking. Yeah, they so went everything a, is brand new. Yeah, they went from a 4-3 uh, zone defense to an attacking 3-4 defense. They went from a pro-style offense to a spread, spread them out, run and gun, and so everybody had, is on both sides of the ball has, has, has had to learn a new culture, a new system. And they work out differently. They train, they train harder. They train longer. He's about, he says he has his whole offense in, but 65% of it should be mastered by the end of the season. Mastered. So you know it's a two-year plan. Harper will kick off. Boone and Walker will be deep. To receive the kick. From the goal line. Boone. Hit from behind as he gets across the 20. And dropped on the play. So the Panthers will set up defensively. And if you're Maine, if you're the Black Bears, and you look ahead here, they've got to get something going offensively. They have got to get some sort of movement on their offensive line. Let's watch the kickoff return now. It's a nice return. Makes a couple guys miss, gets some decent field position. But offensively for Maine, last week what Buffalo did is they kept hitting those slant routes. They obviously can, are having a tough time running up the middle. So if you're Smith, you want to get some quick throws, some bubble screens, some quick slants, get them over committing, then try and run the ball. You know, they have only two yards in total offense so far in this football game. That one is deflected and incomplete, and that is the kind of play that Buffalo ran so effectively last week against the Panthers. Yeah, defensive corner Keith Patterson said in his 23 years, he's never seen a team stick to the quick pass, even though they were pressed coverage every single time, but they kept going after it, they kept throwing it, and he gave them credit, they kept completing it too. They really challenged those cornerbacks, especially Kwan Williams. Well, they dominated the time of possession because on the Panthers' scoring drives last week, uh, they were about two minutes and 30 seconds apiece. There's a short pass that's completed to 25. Good for a couple on the play. McDonald made the catch. He caught six passes last week. And he wrapped up inside by redshirt sophomore Shane Gordon. That's a nice quick throw by Smith. As many completions as you, should, you can get is good. Doesn't matter if it's only for four yards. Doesn't matter if it's three yards. Now you have third down. It's manageable. It's third and seven. Tagliannetti comes in, number 41. Now he's a guy that plays all over the place. Smith sets, throws left. The pass is caught, and that's a first down across the 35 to the 37-yard line. It was Buttles who caught the ball. That was... Tagliannetti there defensively. Their first first down of the game. Lines up to the field side. Lots of room out there. Easy throw. Off coverage. They only rush three. 11-yard pickup and a first down. And the Panthers jump in the neutral zone. And this is what Maine did last week against Bryant. Offside. Offside. Defense. Defense. Number 97. Number 97. Making, contact Making contact with an offensive lineman. lineman. Five-yard penalty. Five penalty. First down. First down. This is what they call a hard two. They're going to try and call their, call their plays, try and get the defense to show their hand where the blitz is coming, who, is, who do they think is going to have their best matchup. Get a couple penalties on that to help them out. They picked up five there, so it's first and five. Here comes the blitz, and the pass is caught on the far side. And it'll be into Pittsburgh territory and a first down on the play. Now they're starting to get into a nice little rhythm here. A couple passes completed. Now Johnson made that catch, and there defensively was Kwan Williams for Pittsburgh. Right at midfield, first down. 
we mentioned they need to get something going offensively and uh, so far they're doing it. Quarterback draw that time and there's some room up the middle for Smith. Mentioned he is much more of a runner than Sinceri. Carried it 14 times the last week. Price had to come and make the tackle. The pitch been blitzing off the backside the past couple plays. Great job of the offensive line of opening it up for Smith. We need more of the same if they're going to keep this game close. 13 yards on that play. First down 10. The ball at the 38 yard line. Same play. Same play. Other side. Not as good a result as he has dropped at the 35 yard line. So give him about three on the play. Maybe two. Second and eight coming. But at least you're getting into a rhythm now where you can get farther into your, your playbook. Nothing has worked for them. So they can't set pit up with anything. Now you've run it. You've thrown it. Now it's looking for some play action on second down. And that's the kind of look that Buffalo gave the Panthers last week set and then reset once they see what's going on. Great job by Smith sending his blocker to the other side. Battles and McDonald are the receivers. That one is bobbled and incomplete on the far side. Intended for 83. Derek Intended for Derek Johnson. He could not hang on to it. So now it's third and long. Hargrove checks back into that Panther lineup along the defensive line. The Quinton Smith will come out. So a little more beef there for Pittsburgh. 11.28 to play in the first half. Smith rolls away from pressure. Puts his head down and gets cracked. At the 30 by Donald. Nice pursuit by Donald. And Smith, what we talked about earlier, how good he is on his feet, how good he is at directing traffic and with ball security. He's going to get chased down here by big number 97. Takes a nice little wallop. Oh, he did, didn't he? Now we have a decision to make. It's fourth down. Oh, I like this. I like that they're going to go for this. be a false set, false count trying to get them going Pitt's going to think about it also and the play clock was winding down to two and so the timeout is going to be taken by Pitt it was Pittsburgh calling the timeout and that's interesting because the play clock was at two yeah I'm going to be sure if Maine would have gotten it off there are some numbers for Cosgrove. Went back after going to college in Maine, went back and coached high school football. Also an assistant a couple of years at Boston College under Bicknell. Then came back to Maine as an assistant, became the head coach, and he must like it there. He has stayed, he's not left. He's been on a few sidelines, hasn't he? Now we got to see if they're really going to go for this or they're going to have a trying to get Pitt to go off sides. If you're going to go, go by your best lineman. They've got McDonald in the backfield. Session is the motion man. Brown is going to be close. Donald. Teaming with LaQuinton Smith to stop that play, and it's very close to the first down. There was a hole there, a bigger hole, but I think he missed his read. No, actually, actually, the guy, guy missed their blocks. Donald came right through. He could have flexed it out a little bit, but it's rough. Second guess of back with his reads. No, what's your call here? I think he's got it. You're gonna put me on the spot, aren't you? Absolutely. I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna jump on board with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what we're talking about. Living to fight another day. Got a fresh set of downs. 
It's a big play and a big measurement because it is key that the Black Bears keep this drive alive. This will be the tenth play in the drive coming up. Ball is spotted inside the 30, about the 27 yard line. Now Maurice McDonald is at the bottom, is playing at the boundary position. Flexed out. He's their best receiver, their best route runner. Instead, they go to Brown, and he's dragged down as he gets inside the 25 yard line by LaQuinton Smith, a true freshman out of Orlando, Florida. McDonald was flexed out one on one on K1 Williams, who got a lot of looks last week. Got caught looking inside, got beat a couple times. If you're going to try and go after somebody, that's the guy you want to attack if you're main. First truly long possession of the game for the Black Bears. Ten minutes remaining in the half. Brown fights his way through a big crowd. Tumbles down to about the 22-yard line. Not sure I'm a huge fan of the second down run. A lot of pass opportunities out there. Flexed out wide to the perimeter. Third down coming, third and about five. And this drive began with the at the 1430 mark, and it's now down to 930. So they've kept the football away from Pittsburgh. And I am Brandon Lindsay at the bottom of the screen. Pump fake to Lindsay. They go long toward the end zone. Battle is on and the catch is made. It's a touchdown, touchdown. by Buttles. He used his size. He's 6'5", a 50-year senior. Got in front of the defender that time, Christian, and just used that size to put it away. He went against Jason Hendricks. 6'1", weight, 85. This is basically basketball 101. Here comes the rebound. Go up and get it at its highest point. His helmet falls off. Unbelievable catch. He was covered. He was blanketed. Warren Smith gave him a chance to make a play, and he came up with it. A 22-yard touchdown strike in Maine. Gets on the scoreboard. A beautiful drive that time by the Black Bears. PAT is up, and the PAT is good. So the kicking handled that time by Harvey. Let's take a look at this 22 yard touchdown pass. And the reaction of head coach Carsgrove as his team gets on the scoreboard. Right now it's Pittsburgh 12 and Maine. A touchdown strike by the Maine Black Bears makes it a 12-7 ball game. And this was done perfectly, I think, as far as the execution was concerned. It was a great job by... Andish will handle the kickoff. The deep man for the Panthers is Corey Davis. Good possession drive by Maine. Gets himself right back in the ball game. Fielded at the 18 by Davis. He gets outside the 30 to about the 33. Let's take another look at the TD catch by a guy who's 6'5". Well, they faked a bubble screen, and Buttles kind of sleeps out, seeps out on the wheel route, and he actually has great coverage by Hendricks, but he's just oversized, outmanned. Warren Smith with a great job of sitting in the pocket for the last second. Look at him going to get it at the highest point. Helmet pops off. That is a Sports Illustrated cover catch right there. And he, did, he did not bring it down to his body, did he? He no. just held it out there. I've got it. And that time a little play action and a keeper by the quarterback. Jack Cosgrove is saying to his men on the sideline, this is what I told you. This is what I told you would happen. Hang around. Stay in the game. We'll make some big plays. We'll lull them to sleep. And then we'll have a chance at the end of the game. It'll be second down and six. Clock rolling, 8.45 to play in the half. He tried to sidearm at that time to his H-back or tight end Graham. Alston was applying some pressure. Coach Graham talked about taking shots downfield. And so far, we haven't seen one vertical pass by Sinceri. Mostly check down, zone reads. He missed three last week. Completed 57% of his passes that game. And they're in the blitz. And they've got it. 
back at the 30. The pressure coming right up the middle to put Sinceri on his backside. Hockey teaming with McMillan. Communication by the offensive line. The blitz comes late. They can't sort it out. 33 comes free. Gets his sack. That's Aaron Aki, a former quarterback. The leader, the smartest guy back on that defense with the sack. Now, Costin was deep to receive. And there is life in the Black Bears from Orono, Maine. Now, he's going to have a chance to take this one. He's going to wave a fair catch and then fields it at the 25 yard line. Dangerous. <laughs> Danger will he let it bounce. Then he picked it up and goes down at the 25. 748 left in the first. This jump main has jumped right back into the game. It's 12-7, and there was a terrific drive by the Black Bears. It started off with a nice little quick slant to McDonald. Just getting something going. Hits Buttles on the quick out to keep the momentum going. Then he's gonna go to Johnson on the outside, pick up a first down, then he's gonna do it himself and get a first down. Takes a big hit, big fourth down run by Bouchon Brown, and then the big catch by Puddles. And there's the excitement he was looking for. Well, the Black Bears get it back Black Bears first attack at their own 23-yard line. First down and 10. Session was the motion man. Smith goes back the other way. Brown out of the backfield makes the catch. He's got a first down, and then he's knifed down at the 40-yard line. That was Williams. Kwan Williams came up to hit him, but a good gain by number two. Off offensive coordinator Kevin Bordron is doing a great job right now, feeling the flow of this game, feeling the flow of the defense and what they're trying to do to his offense. Bouchon Brown with a great job waiting on the screenplay, getting upfield, getting yardage. Pitt right now a little bit on their heels after two good series by Maine. 17-yard pickup on that play. And Smith will settle Brown down in the backfield. First and 10 from the 40. Inside pass incomplete. There was some contact on the play. Reed was right there defensively and you can see six of 11 so far for Warren Smith. He's also had as you mentioned Christian a couple of nice runs on that last scoring drive. What I'm impressed most with Smith is just his ability to handle this offense his communication with the backs with the old line with the receivers. He knows what he's doing. He's been in this offense. He's a leader. Coaches believe in him. Looking at second and ten from his own 40. A four receiver formation. And that's overthrown. I know that was an incompletion on that play, but if you saw the way Warren Smith directed tailback Pushon Brown to go to the opposite side that he was on, he, Smith saw the blitz coming from the back side, motioned to Brown to pick it up, and it picked it up perfectly. He missed on the throw, but there was no sack. He wasn't hurried. And Buttles, who caught the touchdown pass, was the intended receiver, but even that was too tall for the 6'5 receiver. 12-7, Panthers leading. Inside seven minutes left in the half. Now just be careful on this play. You don't need to get it. You can get half of it, change field position. Don't force anything. Third and ten. Pressure coming up the middle, and they'll drop him back at the 35-yard line. That is Donald, Aaron Donald, from Penn Hills High School here in Pittsburgh, a true sophomore. That was a huge sack by Donald. Just bullied his way in there. Just beats the tackle, beats the tackle right away. Throws down Smith with a little bit of oomph, just so he'll remember him. It'll be Waxman to punt to Randall Jones. Aaron Donald with a little bit of sauce on that sack, John. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he might, uh, Smith might have some grass in his helmet. Pretty good kick. Fair catch called for inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. That's where the Panthers will start their next possession with 6.09 remaining in the first half. Pittsburgh striking early, taking a 12-0 lead. But back come the Black Bears of May.
6.09 left before halftime. 12 7 is our score. The Panthers have the lead. He had a 12 0 lead. And along with Christian Fourier, I'm John Sanders and driving Graham out of bounds on the far side. I think you're going to see the tempo picked up a little bit more on this series, John. Coach talked about that he felt that the team didn't go fast enough last week, and he wants the tempo ratcheted up. Graham will not get the first down. He'll get a yard, maybe two, as he falls forward. And that was Raybon Charles who made the hit on him. Black Bears are back in the game. Of course, it's tough to get any rhythm going when the other team's got the ball for like seven and a half minutes. Yeah, winning that winning that field position battle now and time of possession. Underneath pass to Sadler who had the first down and almost gave it back. Bookman hit the shot on him. But it is a first down for the Panthers. Keep in mind that Cameron Sadler is not real big. Yeah, he's, he's their speed guy and he gets across on the shallow cross. So Surrey does not stop hitting him. Graham will get close to midfield, maybe a yard short. The main defense, when they get their hands on Graham, they need to wrap him up. He gets hit and he keeps falling forward. He doesn't stop moving his legs. Once they grab him, they need to call the cavalry and start laying hits on him to wear him down. Because right now, I feel like he's starting to get going a little bit. About 18 seconds off the play clock on that play, and that's what they're shooting for, I think, Christian. 15 to 18 seconds. Yeah, they're moving it up a little bit. They started sluggish last week. And then once they, the offense really opened up once Ray Graham started going. And we have a player down for the Black Bears. I think that's Alston, isn't it? Doug Alston out of East Orange, New Jersey. And he'll be tended to by the training crew. And let's talk about some pressure being applied by Maine. I didn't see much early, but it's been better of late. Great job by Maine getting after Sinceri. Sacking him a couple times in the first quarter. Aki, the young former quarterback, getting in on the play. Defense is going to help them out in this game. You got to throw them off the rhythm. You got to show them that you're here to play also. Not just let them push you around. Defensive coordinator and linebackers coach Joe Rossi said Who they're going to be aggressive also. Has to be happy to be back because he's from Pittsburgh. Went to Central Catholic High School. That's Great a, catch that's and gonna, interference on the play. That's going to be offensive pass interference by Shanahan. The cornerback had great position on this play. Offense. Number 87. 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, McMillan and Shanahan having a conversation as they head back toward the line of scrimmage. But there wasn't much question about that one. No, since Terry threw this ball up in the air, you can see Mick Shanahan trying to give himself some space to catch the ball. But there was no place. It was great coverage. Just held it up there too long. I'm not going to be mad at him for his effort. Well, he was working against Kendall James. Now that's another mismatch. Shanahan, 6'5", 225. Maybe they thought they'd do what Maine did, like they did with Buttle, store it up there, have a guy make a play. It is first and 25, actually. The football is all the way back at the 36. Sunsiri on the run, on the run. And just runs out of bounds. There's no place to go. Here come the booze. Yeah, they're not going to be happy. You know, so much of the buildup to this season was talk about the high octane offense. And at times it's been high octane, but at times not. And Todd Graham has had success anywhere he's gone, whether it be at Rice or at Tulsa. When he was at Tulsa, he led the nation in offense twice in 07 and 08. A little bit of a delay to Graham. Spins at the 40, fights his way across the 45. To the 46 yard line. Pretty good made, effort by Graham. He made about three Xbox old school techno bowl moves right here. Look at him jiving and moving. Makes about three people miss right there. Another guy missed. If you get him going, he's going to get you a lot of yards. 
Alston and Gibbons were the players that missed the tackles that time, but it's still third and very long yardage. Sinceri steps up in the pocket. He dives. The ball comes dives, loose. Cause a on the so that hit the ground. No fumble. It's going to be short of the first down. And they're going to go for it. This is four down territory for them. A coverage sack. There's nothing. Maine's not going to take any chances and let them catch a pass and be wide open. So they're going to play zone. It is fourth down and five. I mean, this is a big play for Pitt. And there's still some time left. 2.30 to play in the half. Do not want to give Maine the ball right now. They get a lot of momentum on defense, and, and their offense is starting to click. Down the middle, the catch is made. Big first down on fourth down. Now, once again, a guy that's so valuable to them, Hubie Graham, a tight end slash H-back. And that was a nifty throw that time by the quarterback. Right up the middle, great pass by Sinceri, getting in over the linebackers. A nice concentration by Graham to pull that in. And here they are, right back again. They don't give you much time to think. Ray Graham inside the five, down to the two. He's got some moves, doesn't he? Yeah, he is electric when he has the ball in open field. 17 yards on that play. See how quickly the momentum changes. He misses two main players, miss a tackle, then another two miss a tackle, and then again by the shoestrings. 12th play of the drive, diving for the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, the Panthers have the answer. You cannot, you cannot catch your breath with this offense. They, Maine had them up against the ropes, and they came back and not only got the first down, but ended up going down and scoring. And once again, Ray Graham. Panthers, who missed a one earlier, will go for two. And Sinceri dives into the end zone. He will pick up the two-point conversion. Now, that's their swinging gate formation. The key is they're going to try and catch somebody off guard. They can't direct snap it to the tailback or just give it to Sinceri. If they get the right read, it's an option read. If they come up and grab Sinceri, he's going to pitch it out to Brown. They leave him wide open. He walks right in for a touchdown. I'm sorry, two points. Now the key play on that drive, though, was the 25-yard fourth down pass play to Hubie Brown. Now Panthers go up 20 to 7 with a minute 45 to go. And as far as this pit team and these fans are concerned, that's a huge drive right there. That's a huge drive. Because you can kind of tell. And look at Ray Graham, 17 attempts, 92 yards. He's just getting started right now, John. He is just kind of getting into a field. Go back to the touchdown and watch how he just slips his way through there, sidesteps, dives. This kid has so much ability. You know what we haven't seen yet? He hasn't caught in a pass out of no. the backfield yet, and he might be the best receiver on the team. You know, and he only caught two last week, but he's on target for the 30 touches that they talked about him getting. They want to, he's going to be that workhorse. We talked about this is a run first, play action pass, spread offense. It's a true no huddle offense. There's a lot of different of uh, different offenses out there. Oregon runs it. Arizona State saw that last night. They ran it a lot. And they have a 6'8 quarterback, Brock Osweiler. They're not going to let him run. That's a pass first offense. They do their running by flexing it out on the swing passes. And here they're going to direct snap it with Graham. Boone and Walker deep for the Black Bears. This is Boone at the five. Spins his way across the 20 to the 22 yard line before he's wrestled down by the Panthers special teams. There's Manny Williams. They have a minute, 33 seconds left in the game. Pitt has one timeout. Maine has both their timeouts remaining. They got a long way to go. But I would think if I'm Jack Cosgrove, thinking about his game plan is just don't give him the ball back before yeah, you go in for halftime. <laughs> you don't want to turn don't it give, over here. Don't turn it over. Don't give him a chance to get more points at halftime. Live the fight another day. First and 10 at the 22. Remember, they will be receiving the kick to start the second half. Quick pass in the flat. That session 
Finally dragged down from behind, but he's got good yardage outside the 40 to the 42-yard line. Pretty nicely designed play, huh? Great play. That little quick missile screen out to the far side. The linemen get out. He picks up a couple nice blocks. Decent running in open field. Get some extra yards after contact. And he picked up 20 on the play. All at the 42-yard line. Smith again, a short pass, and the catch and stepping out of bounds at midfield is Buttles. Now, if I'm Pitt, I'm going to put some pressure on Smith. Make him sweat a little bit. Right now, they're playing off coverage. They got their safeties way back. Brandon Lindsley just came out of the field, off the field. He's their best pass rusher. Minute 16 to play in the half. Inside pass and another first down. I'm not sure I like the whole off coverage that they're doing because Smith is now doing a good job of getting that ball out to his receivers. Well, Johnson made the catch. Williams made the tackle. It's first down at the 41 of Pittsburgh. Smith again another short pass. Does he have it? If he does, it's a nice catch, but it's going Buttles made the reception of the effort, but I think they've called it incomplete. How quickly Maine has driven down the field. Twenty to seven. Coach Cosgrove's team is down as we head toward halftime. A minute away. It'll be second and ten following the incompletion. You've got Buttles and Johnson both split to the left side. Two other receivers split near side. Pass is dropped incomplete, intended for Buttles. This is where you got to be careful because now you have third down. You still got 55 seconds left on the clock. You got to assume if you don't get it, you got to punt it away. I don't assume this is field goal range. Well, Quentin Smith has checked into that linebacker core for Pittsburgh. Third down and 10. Great job directing traffic by Smith. Making sure Brown's on the right side. Pressure comes right up the middle that time, but Smith gets away and throws low on the far side. Aaron McDonald just destroyed the offensive lineman on this last play. First he took the offensive lineman, then he took on the back. Yeah, he really applied the pressure. The pass was incomplete. Fourth and ten. Panthers will get one final shot here in the first half. Waxman will punt. Don't even give him a chance to run this back. Kick it out of bounds. High booming kick. Panthers will let it roll into the end zone. So Pitt will have it at the 20 with 40 seconds still remaining in the opening half. That's a lot of time, John. <laughs> they can they can go down there and score quickly. We're talking about snapping the ball 15, 18 seconds. Now, if you're a spread offense, do you have a two minute offense or do you keep your spread spread offense out there? What do you do? Because most two-minute offenses that you put out there aren't this fast. Well, they got 40 seconds. They could run about three plays. As quick as they go. Four receivers in this formation. Pass is deflected and incomplete. Austin got a hand on it. That could have been a big play if they would have been able to recognize where the ball was. It could have been a huge play. He just sees it late. Yeah, there were what, like four white shirts around that ball. Second and ten. Graham. First down at the 35-yard line. A nice run, a pickup of 15, and a first down for the Panthers. It is not in Todd Graham's nature to slow down no matter where he is in the game or how much time is left. He's staying with his offense. Sinceri guns it down the middle, and again, it's Hubie Graham 
who makes the catch. That'll be another first down. Keep your eye on that clock now. See if he spikes it, gives himself one last chance. Hubie Graham, again, right up the middle. This guy does everything. He blocks with his hand on the ground. He flexes out. He catches seam routes. And the timeout is called by Maine. The Black Bears will stop the clock with seven seconds left in the first half, and I believe they want some more on the clock. <laughs> well, I think they say they get some more. I think Tino was going to spike that ball, wasn't he? I don't think the, name, the word spike <laughs> is in Todd Graham's vocabulary. There's no spike. It's like there's no crying in baseball, John. There's no <laughs> spiking with Todd Graham's offense. <laughs> I mean, look, he had 55 seconds left. He didn't go into a two-minute drill. He went into his base offense. A couple hands off, handoffs to Graham. QB Graham, uh, big catch up the middle. Well, they talked a lot in preparing for this game about QB Graham and the value he gives this team, and we're seeing it in the first half. Yeah, he worked, comes in as an H-back, as a tight end. He goes in the backfield as a lead blocker. He can, get his, he can put his hand on the ground, short yardage goal line. You know, they got the three seconds back, and now I have the ten seconds in the half. And they still have one timeout left. And they get a player rushing for over 100 yards. The Panthers do pretty well. Of course, last week it was Graham who had 200 yards, and he's over 100 this afternoon. And we still have 30 minutes of football to go. Empty backfield. The game clock for 10 seconds. The clock will start on the snap. All of a sudden, the game clock got down to three seconds, and I'm not sure how that happened. Because they had reset it to 10 seconds. So what you see on the screen is correct. Last play of the half. Airing it out down the middle. And incomplete. Costin was there but could not come up with the interception. The pass was intended for Ray Graham. And that's really the first time, Christian, we've seen him throw to it. Yeah, we've seen him seen him go downfield. I mean, it's, you know, 10 seconds left on the it's, That's kind of like a punt. If you, if you catch it, great. If you don't, well, the, game, the half's over and you go inside. So I'm thinking a little bit of the same here. Still three seconds on the clock, and this should be the final play of the half. You got Mike Shanahan at the top. He's the biggest receiver. He's looking that way. Some Siri dumps it off. And the catch is made a short run by Zach Brown. And that'll do it. First half is in the books. The Panthers leading 20 to 7. And the last week at the end of the first half, they led 7 to 3. And of course, it was a big lead for Maine in their opening victory over Bryant. They were up 21 to nothing. They did get on the board, did get back in the game, but Todd Graham's team had the answer before halftime with that good drive that got him down there and gave them the touchdown they needed. Yeah, and he's not allowing his team to go in the locker room until he gives them a good talking to. That's just not good enough for Todd Graham. I don't think they're going to stay there the whole halftime, are they? <laughs> I don't think they have oranges uh, out here. You got to go get go inside to get your oranges. Yeah, the Black Bears were fired up, of course, remembering the military on this special weekend. It's college football here on ESPN3, and the Panthers will take the intermission for the 20 to 7 lead. Again, riding on the strength of Ray Graham, the Panthers lead it. We've got more to come on ESPN3. We're back. You're watching college football on ESPN3, presented by Sprint. Halftime score, Pittsburgh 20, and Maine 7. Panthers got off to a 12-0 start. They missed an extra point, got a couple of field goals, and then a touchdown with a two-point conversion for their 20. And Maine had one very nice drive, put seven on the board. But again, the guy we talked about right off the top, Christian Foyer, let's talk about Ray Graham because he's a guy that we know can do the job. What are your overall thoughts on the first half? On the first half, a little sluggish for Pitt and a little sluggish for, for Maine also, but this is the Ray Graham show. Just like last week when they started off slow, 
They started going when Ray Graham started getting the ball on a regular basis. That opened up the passing lanes. That enabled other guys to get open. Hubie Graham made some great plays. Mike Shanahan makes some great plays. But let's talk about Ray Graham. Whether he's catching it or running it, he's tough to catch. You'll see him here catching the first touchdown. Jumps over, gets a touchdown, avoids the first play. But now, look at him. Duking and jiving. Miss, makes three people miss. Falls forward. Diving for another touchdown. In the first half, he has 18 touches for 107 yards, two touchdowns. If I'm Coach Graham, I'm thinking this is going to be more the same in the second half. More Todd Graham, just like you want more cowbell. Pittsburgh, they want more, but they want more Graham. Well, they had a couple of Grahams at work. Ray Graham, of course, doing the running with over 100 yards. Hubie Graham was terrific catching the football, including a big 25-yarder on fourth down that keyed the drive that got him to 20. The Hubie Graham is that guy that does a lot for Pittsburgh, whether he's blocking out of the backfield, whether he's catching passes out of the slot. But you can see those two seam routes that he caught changed the momentum for Pittsburgh and enabled them to have another chance to score some points. It is 20 to 7. Pittsburgh has the lead. The band is on the field. It is halftime. Back with more from Heinz Field after this. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN3, presented by Sprint and the Panthers. At halftime, have a 20 to 7 lead over the Black Bears of Maine. We talked a little bit about Pittsburgh's offense getting going. Let's talk some more about the main Black Bears and what they were able to do on their one long sustained drive. They took it down the field. A nice march. Losing, using a lot of short passes. This is McDonald making that catch. And Smith, who did a good job in the first half hitting Derek Buttles. And you'll see more of him later. The short toss there. Getting outside on the play was Johnson. And then Smith himself with some good runs to keep that drive alive. And he paid the price a little bit, but he got up and went right back in there. And that's Brown. That was a big fourth down play. He was able to get the first down. Here's the touchdown pass to Derek Buttles, who simply jumped up and out leaped to Jason Hendricks. Touchdown. And that was the touchdown for head coach Cosgrove in the first half. It is 20 to 7. The Panthers are leading the Black Bears of Maine. And a reminder, there's a lot more to come today on ESPN3, our second Saturday of college football. And we've got a load of games coming up tonight. Florida State is at home. Akron, after playing at Ohio State, will be at home against Temple. Georgia Tech in Middle Tennessee. These games are all on ESPN3. North Texas hosting Houston. Western Kentucky will entertain Navy. Louisiana Tech in Central Arkansas. Arkansas State in Memphis. And Louisiana Monroe taking on Grambling State. That's tonight at 7. So all of, the ga all of those games are still to come today on ESPN3. So stay with us because there's a lot more college football action. And you can have your choice of some terrific football games as we go along this afternoon, this evening, and, of course, tonight. It is halftime at Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Panthers on top, 20 to 7. Back with more right after this. Welcome back to college football. The matchup between the Black Bears of Maine from the CAA against the University of Pittsburgh from the Big East. The Maine Black Bears. Part of the Bowl Championship subdivision. The Panthers are part of the uh, uh, football bowl subdivision. That's a lot of letters in there. It sure is, but it's 20 to 7. I want to make one comment about our conversations with Coach Cosgrove because he is from Boston. And when we were on the phone with him talking earlier this week, we got toward the end of the conversation, and all he <laughs> wanted to do with you, the former Patriot and world champion, was talk about the pro team. Yeah, he said he was sitting in his office looking at a picture of Tom Brady. I said, well, why don't you have old number 88 up there, number Christian <laughs> Fourier? He's like, nope. Number 12 was the only guy I have on my wall. He's got a good one. That's a good co If you're going to have any guy on your wall or wear somebody's jersey, it's number 12. Well, it was an interesting note. And 
obviously the longer we talked to him, that Boston accent came out. Didn't, didn't it? it, though? <laughs> I mean, it was like, ah, I got to go to my car. <laughs> I got to got to find my friend Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a delight, and he was so cooperative. and uh, he was a great his, guy. His team has played very well. They're playing tough. They're really hanging in there. They had some mistakes early on in the first quarter, which I wish they uh, – which I'm sure he wishes they wouldn't have had, kind of kept them closer in this game. But they fought back. They had a nice drive, good defensive stances. But they got to find a way to stop Ray Graham. Well, we want to talk just a little more about your pro career since it lasted 13 years, and most guys don't last anywhere close to that. But you are in the record books, <laughs> along with Vinny <laughs> Testaverde, because yes. I don't know what year that was. But the combined age was 80 because he was 44 and you were 36 and combined for a touchdown pass. And they told you after you made the catch that you set a record, right? Yeah, that was in 07 when I was playing with the Carolina Panthers and Vinny Testaverde joined us late in the season to try and help us out. And I remember I came off the field and uh, somebody said, hey, man, you know, you broke a record. I was like, all excited. Well, what is it? What is it? Not having any clue. He's like, yeah, the oldest quarterback receiver combination in NFL history. <laughs> And you could see the sigh, and my eyes droop. It was like, really? <laughs> really? Do you want to kick me when I'm down? But hey. it's a, he's a great guy. And even at, I don't know how old Vinny was, I mean, 44 maybe. Right. He could still sling it. He could still throw it. He couldn't hold up body-wise, but as smart as they come. We've got more halftime to come. We'll be back. Get ready. We'll get you set for the second half with some stats from the opening 30 minutes of play. Stay with us. Back with more here on ESPN3. They'll head back to their bench, get ready to start the second half. Maine will have the kickoff to begin the second half of play. He was very animated as the team went to the locker room was Coach Graham. Let's take a look as we get a chance here at some of the stats from the opening half of play. Boy, there was almost nothing statistically at all for the back Bears until late. Yeah, I think for the first quarter they had about eight rushing yards and six passing yards. But they got after it in the second half. Got a nice series going. Got some rhythm. Made a couple stops on defense to kind of change the momentum. And then Pitt just took off with it again. Well, the time of possession is pretty much even, and that's because of that one long drive that the Black Bears had. Panthers had a long drive to start the ball game of four and a half minutes as they marched 76 yards and got into the end zone for the first time. But some of that emotion was sucked out when they missed the extra point, you know? Missed the extra point, and it's the little things that are going to get Pittsburgh over that hump. You know, Dave Wonstant had nine, ten win seasons. He was able to win a bunch of games, but he could never win the Big East. Well, what hurt him last year was the fact that they lost at UConn and they lost here at Heinz Field to West Virginia. Those were the killers and probably marked the end of the Dave Wanstead uh, reign here at the University of Pittsburgh. Meantime, the reign has been quite long for Jack Cosgrove. He's closing in on 100 career wins. He's been there for 19 seasons. I asked him the other day, I said, well, you just went to Maine when you went to college and just stayed there. And he said, that's just about right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the winters would get to me. I know <laughs> I, mean, I live in Boston, and I'm from L.A., went to school in Colorado, so I've been around bad weather. I hear it's, I hear it's rough up there. I hear it gets cold. I'm sure that's true. Panthers will be kicking off to begin the second half of play. And how important is this opening possession going to be for the Black Bears? Well, I think this is huge. Um, they ended the second quarter with some really decent drives, even before they gave the ball back to Pittsburgh in that second half. So you know they want to come out there and really set the tone right away, make some good reads, move the ball down the field, at least change field position, at least let Pitt work on a long field. And for the most part in the first half, the Panthers worked on a short field. Walker is deep, along with Boone to receive the kickoff from Kevin Harper. Third quarter is underway. A couple yards deep in the end zone. Here comes Boone. Wrestle down as he gets to the 15 yard line. Good job that time by Thomas. Tom Thomas tracked him down on the special teams. I almost thought he was going to take a knee. I did, too. Yeah, it wasn't the best idea, the best decision to take that out. And 
Nine of 18 for Warren Smith. Carried the ball a couple of times as well. Not running as much as he did last week in their victory over Bryant. The key for Smith is just making sure everybody gets lined up right. Good communication, ball security, no interceptions. First down, 10 at the 15 yard line. Inside handoff to Brown. Leans across the 20 yard line. Nice. Uh, Alexi and Karajin teaming up to make the tackle. That was a nice play right there. Nice design play. They've been running this, this sprint to the right with Smith, and now they come back and give it to Brown on a misdirection. You're going to have to get deep into their playbook now. Start everything that they did in the first half. You always have a compliment play that goes with it. That is like your home run play. Second and three. Third quarter is just underway at Heinz Field. Perillo shifts into the backfield. Smith, nothing there at all. Max Gruder made the tackle on him. Gruder, one of the veterans of that linebacker core, a fifth-year senior. Talk about getting downhill in a hurry. Max Gruber, preseason all-conference, gets down fast. They were talking about wanting their linebackers to get downhill and make plays. Textbook right there by number 55. Dropping for a one-yard loss. Third down and four. And positive yards on first down, and then they lose a yard. Smith, short pass is dropped and incomplete. Intended for Buttles, he could not hang on. And one of the other linebackers, Shane Gordon, was with him. Shane Gordon, the sophomore. One of those guys that are looking to get a lot of production out of. You're going to see a lot of different linebackers in there. Todd Thomas, Juan Price are thinking about putting him back in the middle to get more speed on their defense. Deep back is Jones. Waxman to punt. So it's three and out on the first possession of the second half for the Black Bears. And flags all over the play. This one is going to be blown dead. Legal procedure is going to be the call against Maine. False start. False start. Offense. So a false Number start. 28. 28. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. You'll recall the start of the game, they had some of those mistake five yard penalties. And of course, the one that really hurt them in that opening drive for Pittsburgh was running into the kicker. Running into the kicker, uh, tapping into the kicker. That's not act like the kicker got knocked down I and mean, those kickers are known to be good actors but they ran into him nonetheless and put him in a tough situation now Pitt's going to have great field position again starting the second and third quarter almost got to him from the outside they will let it bounce and it dribbles all the way down inside the 30 yard line. So a nice bounce on that kick. Yeah, they needed that too. Almost got blocked. One of the guys came through on the back end. But that's what they needed to do change the field position. If they could get a first down, at least make Pitt earn it. Now let's go talk, a long way. Let's talk about Tino Sinceri and the kind of half that he had. He missed some receivers in the first half last week. He was pretty much in control. A 55 yard punt thanks to the roll. And what about Sinceri? Sinceri, you know, for the first half, I'd give him a C plus. C plus. He's been hitting his passes, but he's also been missing on a couple. But he's been making big plays when it counts. And Hubie Graham has just been a force out there catching those seam routes. And the Panthers going in a hurry, able to complete a pass to kick off their first possession of the second half and move it out to the 40. First down and 10. Graham's going to be wrestled down. Charles got to him almost immediately. There was not much there. Rayborn, Charles, Kevin Fanner, Ryan Nanny. Those are the three guys that are going to have to stop the middle and make him be able to go side to side. East and West. Ball at the 41. It's a third down nine. Sinceri steps away from some pressure, throws on the run, and throws it away. Gibbons was right there with him on Sinceri. Just almost got a sack. When you rush the quarterback, one thing they tell you is not to leave your feet. Don't go for the fake. Sinceri fakes the pass, 
like he's going to throw it. They leave their feet and then they lose the opportunity for a sack. And Brown comes on for Graham in the pit backfield. Four receivers in this formation. Sincere guns it for a first down. All the way down to the 40 yard line is Shanahan. Well, some of his passes as he's thrown over the middle that one is good for 20 yards but I tell you what he put some zip on that football doesn't he put a lot of zip on that when he has time to set his feet and really dig in there and throw the ball he's accurate five yards on the run that time by Brown Charles makes the tackle got him by the ankles it'll be a second down five Panthers on the march on their first possession Graham is back in there, so it's a two-back offense. And the quick out intended for Sadler is incomplete. Every now and then, he just lets one get away from him, like that pass right there to Sadler. Easy pitch and catch, easy throw. It'll be third down and five. Brown checks out of the lineup. So it's Ray Graham as the lone back. And Carswell is now checked in as the H-back for the Panthers. There's some pressure. He gets the pass away, and it's complete for a first down. Yeah, Caught it by Street. That's a pro-style throw right there. He has pressure coming to his front side. He's, he stays in the pocket. You know he sees it, throws it, takes the hit. That was a good throw. That was a great route also. It's kind of stuff you need from him. Street gets it down to the 23 for a first and 10. They pick up 11 on that play. Sinceri. Throws to the end zone. Intercepted. You know, making the interception that time is number five on that defensive unit for the Black Bears. So that stops the drive. The Panthers had a good one going. But Kendall James picks it off. Kendall James, he kind of holds on the ball a little bit. Undercuts it. Makes a great catch. Twenty to seven, eleven thirteen to play in the third. Tino Sinceri has thrown his first interception of the season, and so the Black Bears back in business at their own twenty-yard line. Three receivers left, one to the right. Smith with a quick toss. Session makes the catch, and he'll get nothing. If you're Pittsburgh, you're trying to figure out how can you get some distance from this main team that's just scrappy. I mean, they're just not giving up. They're putting themselves in good positions. They're keep, they're keep working. But Pittsburgh cannot score any more points. They had a good drive underway that was diffused by the interception in the end zone. So Smith resets his line, resets his back. It's away from pressure. And the question is, did he catch it? I don't think so. It was intended. Smith was pressured that time by Hargrove, and making the attempt was Derek Johnson, but he trapped it. But that was an unbelievable job by Smith of avoiding that pressure, at least giving himself an opportunity to make this throw. You got to catch that ball. You got to come back to it. That's game-changing catches. It'll be third down and ten. They're going to review it. They're going to review, but it hit the ground. And this is the first review that we've had this afternoon. I almost feel like Smith had uh, eyes in the back of his head. And our replay official is Michael Semcheski. And we've been hearing Jeff McConaughey. Oh, I don't know. Uh, that's from the other angle. It looked like. It hit the ground and popped up. Let's watch it here. But it hits his hands, hits his chest, and I want to say that's a completion. Well, they ruled incomplete. That was the call on the field. Well, they need to have conclusive evidence. Well, that might be this. it right there. 
I think this is a catch. At first, I thought it hit the ground, and he acted his way to make it look like a catch, but it hits his hands. Yeah, but I, the question is, then did it hit the ground after he hit I don't his know. Hands? Let's watch it one more time. Hits his. I don't know. This is gonna be. This is gonna be really close. Hits his hands. Bounces up at his chest. And does it touch the ground there? The tip might. <laughs> but he has control of it. So, if you're in the booth right now, John, what are you calling? I you, don't, made, you put me on the spot earlier. What I'm are you glad, calling? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not up there with the replay. I would flip a coin. I don't know that it's conclusive. That, that would be my only question. You if know it, what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you. It has to be clean and clear. And Jeff McConaughey will give us the official ruling when he gets it from upstairs. Now, he does complete this. With unbelievable play by Smith. Watch Smith. Feels the pressure, slides to his left, throws. Cross his body. You know, so the more we look at it, I think it's probably a catch, don't you? I mean, I don't know. I'm leaning towards catch, move the chains. You know, coaches talked about how smart Warren Smith was and how great he did at making decisions and check downs and commanding that offense, putting everybody in the right spot. We've seen it all day. All right, take a pick. Here we After, go. Review, After review, the receiver, the receiver was able to get his hands underneath the, ball, hands underneath the ball while going to the ground. He's going to the play. It was a first down. first down. The ball he plays at the 44-yard line. The clock will be on the ready. Well. It turns out to be a big gainer Chuck all the way up. out to the 44. Chuck went up for the little guy right there. Good play by Smith. Excellent play by Smith. That gives me nice job by Johnson. And on that ball, too. It's a huge reversal as yeah. far as the back Black Bears are concerned. Yeah, they will not give up. They're not letting go of this. It's 20 to 7. The Panthers have the lead. It's a quick pass, and that is dangerous. And Williams was over there, number two for Pittsburgh. Kiwan Williams, he's, he's seen that play at least three times now, and he's like, uh-uh, not going to do it. I'm surprised he didn't catch that and take it back to the house because he had a great jump on that play. Yeah, but it looked like he was tackling the guy rather than going yeah, for the football. Going for the football, and you might get your picture in the paper. Second and ten, four wide receivers in this formation, one left, three right. Panthers show blitz and Smith keeps it. Mm, Flag boring. goes down, probably a hold. Yeah. Gruder makes the tackle. The gain was close to midfield. Holding. Holding. Offense. But it will come Number back. Number 56. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That was the center, Garrett Williamson, who was called for the penalty. They've been running this little quarterback draw and having a lot of success with it. You see Gruber just kind of waiting, and he's like, uh oh, uh, no, not again. But a little hold. Yep, you, could, the play. you could see the hold. He had his hands on Aaron Donald that time. And big challenge for this main offensive line going against this bigger defensive front, which is rotating a lot of guys. These guys are getting breaks. They have eight guys that go into this rotation. Smith completes the pass. Session. We wrestled down at the 43-yard line. They ran this play right into a backside blitz that Pitt threw at him, which is the perfect time. If you're going to run a screen, you run it into a blitz. You know, that time it was Tristan Roberts. They were that group of linebackers who got in there to make the tackle. Yeah, they worked that play off of the, uh, the missile screen that they've been running so much. Fake the missile screen, screen to the right. Two of nine on third down. For the Black Bears. Tough distance for this for this main team. Third and 11. Session. Motions left. And the pass is behind the intended receiver that time, Derek Johnson. Williams was there on the coverage. 
Well, Maine, Pitt is doing a good job. They're able to rush four to five guys and drop everybody else into coverage and get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They don't really need to the blitz. Their guys, their front four, are big enough and strong enough to disrupt the passing game without all the blitzes going on. So Pitt can sit back and play coverage, wait for the pressure to get to the quarterback, and break on the ball. 8.43 to play here in the third. Panthers have led throughout. I'm John Sanders along with Christian Fourier. Happy to have you with us here on ESPN3 College Football. And he's going to run it. Waxman, a left hander. It's going to be caught, but right at the original line of scrimmage. It's incomplete, as a matter of fact. They went for it on fourth down. Do not get there. More good field position for Pittsburgh when we come back on the. First time. Panthers get the ball back on the turnover after the miss on fourth and this is the third time the Panthers have started a drive in Maine territory. They've got it at the 43 yard line. Graham a couple blockers ahead cuts it back spins and gets inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. I can't remember during this game so far if the first guy that's laid hands on Graham has actually taken him to the ground. Well, you talked about it earlier that they need to wrap him up, and that's been tough to do. Yeah, there's, just, there's a hit right there. He spins away and gets an extra couple of yards. Just hold on to him. Don't even worry about tackling him. Don't try and get a big hit on him. Just hold on to him. Got away from McMillan, who has been a sure tackler, but from behind that time. Sinceri it's Cole with a sack of Sinceri. That was a great call by defensive coordinator Joe Rossi. They slant defense at number 99 comes in makes a huge play Michael Cole second year starter coaches love him think they had he has a lot of upside started as a freshman now as a sophomore. Pittsburgh native coach Rossi running the defense uh, and again since series in trouble this pit was not even ready for this play the well, only one who was ready was the offensive center everybody else stood around well it was the ends the defensive ends Alston and Cole who got the sack so back to back sacks for Cole nobody moves nobody blocks <laughs> that's a lookout block there <laughs> yeah, this is like one of those things where you have this new offense this new scheme and nobody's quite a hundred percent what to do on everything you know, they had the great field position and they're going to give it back the drops the ball and still gets the kick away <laughs> it's not much of a kick. This is a. Uh, <laughs> that was a disastrous possession uh, for Pittsburgh. This is getting. This is what you call bad ball right here. When I when I used to mess up, when I played for the Patriots, offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss would just would just say bad ball. That's bad football right there. Two plays in a row. Offensively, you're not ready. Special teams wise, you're not ready. Well, they wind up with a minus three. On the punt. You're trying to shake a team that won't give up. A lower level team up against it. New offense, new defense, tons of rotation, bunch of different players. Now yeah, let's correct that. It was a plus four on the kick, not a minus three. But in any case, it's good field position for the Black Bears. They've got it at the Pittsburgh 47 yard line. Play action from Smith down the middle, wide open. That's Battles who made the catch, fights his way inside the 10, and dives inside the five. Smith's the first time Maine has been under center. Warren Smith has been taking snaps all day from the shotgun. The first time he goes under center, it's play action pass. It's the tight end right up the seam, right behind the linebackers. Wide open safeties, nowhere in sight, makes one miss. Unbelievable play, great call by Maine. Williams made the tackle but it's first and goal for the Black Bears and a touchdown here Christian gets him right back in the game and right back in it but this is where these spread offenses like Maine and Pitt struggle short yardage goal line situations. Yeah, that's a touchdown. A pass. Session in the end zone second touchdown pass of the afternoon for Smith and here come the Black Bears. Your defensive keys tell you certain things. Short yardage and goal line. Stop the run first. Defense, cornerbacks, they overcommit to the run. 
And they're able to hit Session right under the axe like he's blocking, slips right through him. You know how many touchdowns I've caught doing that, John? Several, right? A lot. <laughs> Works every time. Six thirteen to go third quarter, and Maine is back in the hunt. They're going to go for two. And they're going to get it. I got to give it to Maine. They are not giving up. They're throwing everything at them. The kitchen sink. And let's take a look at the touchdown again. Well, it was a two-point run by Treister, who came at a quarterback. He is normally the holder. He got it in the end zone for two. And that's a nice play and a well and designed drive. Yeah, the young guy, Juan Williams. Williams. Yeah. Over commits, got caught peeking inside. Touchdown and then a two point conversion. Treister is the guy who normally holds for the kicking team, and he's the backup quarterback. And he's going to get up and go. You know, that's a read option. You have one choice take it yourself or pitch it. And the touchdown, great call by Maine with the pop pass. Fake the run, get everybody to commit. Put it right over their heads. And who'd they go after? The young guy, Quan Williams. Well, Session got the touchdown. He was a guy who a couple years ago had a record setting game as the quarterback for Maine. They're playing behind Smith. And Smith's been terrific this afternoon. Smith has been that guy that Cosgrove talked about his best players being his best players. Harvey with a kickoff. And that one's going to. Bounce out of bounds. That'll give Pitt good field position. Last time it happened was 2004 at Mississippi State. They played in Starkville. And the Black Bears held them on, kept fighting, got the win. Just keep holding on, just keep hanging around, hanging around. And then you start believing that you actually pick out of bounds. Kicking team, the ball be placed on the 40 yard line, first down. It gives you confidence, it gives you energy, it gives you purpose. And then on the flip side, Pittsburgh, you're getting frustrated. You're getting angry. Uh, three wide receivers left the wide side of the field. And Graham, nowhere to go. He is wrapped up quickly by Fander. And then you start playing tight. You start, if you're not playing loose, you're at a disadvantage. Now you're thinking too much. 20 to 15. Who would have thought? With just less than six minutes left in the third quarter. Graham out of the backfield, mm. makes a move, gets to midfield, and then he's run out of bounds. So Graham, a terrific effort. Charles finally caught up with him and ran him out of bounds. But again, those stop and go moves of Ray Graham are pretty tough. It's not even fair. I mean, this is a guy that can stop on a dime, change direction, accelerate. Watch what he does to Troy Russell, the rover linebacker. He is tough to tackle in space. The Panthers pick up the big first down. They get into main territory, and on a first down play, they'll pick up maybe two. When Pitt's been in a jam, they've leaned on two people, QB Graham and Ray Graham. Each guy's made huge plays to change field position or to change momentum. Graham is lined up as a tight end in this formation. Sunsiri dumps it over the middle. The catch is made by Street. Street's close to a first down. Footman made the tackle. The Panthers will have a first down, but we have a main player down on the field. And I think that's the guy that made the tackle is down. Ryan Taylor is the head trainer for Coach Cosgrove and the Black Bears of Maine. Let's take another look at this play. Nice little return route. Looks like he gets kicked right in the helmet. Yeah, by his own teammate. By huh? his own teammate. Yep, boom. Maybe caught him with the knee, you think? Uh, yeah, it's one of those plays where football is crazy, you know, it's it's a full force collision every time and a lot of the time you see these defensive players on pursuit they, their own players ends up knocking them out. 
It's amazing that you played that long. You know, if you think about it. I don't remember how long I played. That's how many hits I took. <laughs> First down 10 for the Panthers. On the move at the 36. Graham reverses his field. And slides through for a couple of yards as he gets down to about the 32. Trey Russell made the tackle. Definitely in rhythm right now as far as this hurry up and go offense is concerned. About 18 off the game clock that time or the play clock. Sinceri throws it short to Graham. Makes a move, gets inside the 25, and that's good for a first down. And that's all he needs to do. Got another guy down, but all he needs to do is Maine is playing real deep covers. They don't want anything to get behind them, so they're they're okay with letting them throw those little dink and dunk passes. The problem is the one that they're throwing it to is number one, Ray Graham. That's Capella who is down, and once again, the training staff will come onto the field for the Black Bears. Ooh. Well, again, yeah, good pop that time. The hardest hits are usually from your own players. And it was then you take that helmet off immediately because he took a blow to the head from another helmet from his team. It's always scary when you see that. The collisions that happen sometimes in football and you really kind of look at yourself and say, how the heck did these guys get up in the first place. You know, the Panthers will have a first down and you can see on the sideline they're still working on the other player who was hurt. Bootman. And another black bear is down at the 25 yard line. The Panthers will have it right about there. And he'll head to the bench. I feel like sometimes Pitt just kind of, once they really put their mind to it, they start moving the ball. They start focusing more. They start running better plays. They start doing everything better. In Siri. Down to about the 12 yard line, completed to Shanahan. Shipley was there defensively, and it's another first down for Pittsburgh. For a big guy who's 6'5, I mean, he really does control his body well when he's in the open field in that slot position. Pick up of 12. Nothing there for Graham. He is wrapped up quickly. Fanner leading the way along with Cole. Now you got a little dose of play action pop pass from Maine. You've been heavy with Ray Graham. Graham lost a yard there. Second down and 11. Ray Graham inside the 10. Head down. Takes a hit and gets to about the two yard line. James made the play on him, but again, an excellent run after the short pass. Into the hands of Graham. Talked about how good he is out of the backfield catching the ball. Coach Graham says he might be the have the best hands on the team. They spot it at the one first and goal. Graham. No, I don't think so. Not that time. The defense stiffened. You have offenses like these spreads that are used to being in two point stances the whole game. They never go on a three point stance. Then you have a third and short. You have a goal line situation. And they're just not used to it. So in these situations, they're at a disadvantage. Well, this is more of a power formation because Jubilato, the fullback, is in there to block for Graham. And that's what he's trying to do. Graham puts his head down and gets in. Graham again with a touchdown. So the Panthers come back and add to their lead. Second week in a row that Graham has scored three TDs. 116 yards. They've been tough yards at times, Christian, but he's done the job. He's done a lot of it by catching the ball out of the backfield, making people miss. Sincere, trying to throw the ball downfield, but not finding anybody open. Trusting the system. Well, the going Panthers through his reads. Go for two. Looks like it, huh?
26 15. Mike, Mike Shanahan. Sanceri throws to the end zone for the touchdown, and you called it perfectly. It was Shanahan. I get credit for that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm keeping score, too, right, over good. here. Good call. But now it's 28 15. The Panthers back up by 13. Christian called it. The Panthers threw it. Mike Shanahan just sneaking out the back. The naked play. Doesn't have his flat. UB Graham. Ray Graham again just imposing his will on the main defensive front. Getting some help from his O line, too. Nice block by the fullback. Putting his head down. And that's Jubilato, who doesn't play very much because you've often got Hubie Graham in that backfield instead of a fullback. They'll also put K.K. Mosley Smith back there, who's a defensive tackle. But if you're a if you're a fullback, I mean that's a great name for a fullback. Jubilato. Third score of the afternoon for Graham, averaging. Almost six yards per carry. He was over six yards per carry last week. 60 yards on the drive in 11 plays. 347 off the clock. So the numbers pretty good in his two games combined. So be Boone. Well, he almost stepped out of bounds, didn't he? Not a real good decision there. Now you have a long way to go. So a big series right now coming up for the pit defense. 221 to play in the third quarter. One of the backup linebackers, Joe Trebitz, is down on the coverage. Twenty-eight fifteen. Last week, the Panthers came alive with 28 second half points, scored on every possession in the second half against Buffalo, and they scored on their first possession of the day today. But the Black Bears have hung tough. Timeout. Smith saw something he didn't like. And lined up in a two tight end set. Lindsey in a two point stance. Williams on the backside. If you don't like the call, and if you're a smart quarterback, wasting a timeout like that, it's money earned right there. Why put yourself in a bad situation? You're already backed up. You got a senior quarterback that's been through a lot. Played originally at Iona. Dropped their football program. Which meant he could come over and play right away without having to sit out. First and ten. That's Perillo, the tight end, moving in the backfield. And down he goes. That's inside the five. The running back on that particular possession was number 42. They line up in their two tight end front, showing run. But the, all the offensive linemen showed pass. That's an easy read for the defensive tackles, linebackers to get into coverage. If you're going to do play action, you got to sell it as an offensive lineman. You got to come off the ball, recover, let the linebackers think it's run so they pop up. Second down and 17. McDonald is the motion man. Inside handoff. That's. Carrying the ball that time was number 42. We've seen him on the kick teams. Terrell Walker. And Walker playing right now in place of Brown. Panthers make some changes as they get set to face a third and long. It is third and 14. Todd Thomas, number eight, checks into the game. He's a speedy outside linebacker, good cover guy. Tagliandetti also. Smith on the keeper. It's across the 15 out near the 17-yard line. 
We're in the final minute of the third quarter and the Panthers will get it back again. Nice safe play by Maine. Don't want to take any chances. Don't want to put the ball in the air. Other than the penalties that Maine has had in the first quarter, the game has pretty much gone exactly how Cosgrove wanted it to go. Jones deep to receive the kick from Waxman. In over in. Jones at midfield. Dragged down as he got close to the 40-yard line. A 33-yard punt on the play. Ray Graham came on in the second half last week for Pittsburgh against Buffalo, and it's been more of the same this afternoon. Uh, we knew that the key to this offense was going to be the running game, and Ray Graham did disappoint where he's been excelling in the second half, is catching the passes out of the backfield and taking names. And here with the touchdown, great block by the fullback, sneaks his way in there. It is the fourth time the Panthers have started in Maine territory. Sanceri with the play fake, steps away from pressure, still on his feet, and he'll get about three. Fander got in there, along with Charles. We have played three here in Pittsburgh. The Black Bears got back into it, but the Panthers right now have danced out to a 28-15 lead. Twenty-eight fifteen. This is a tradition here. A little Neil Diamond action as you start the fourth quarter. But let's look ahead. The schedule's going to get a lot tougher for the University of Pittsburgh, starting with a trip to Iowa City. And they've got Notre Dame at home and USF as Big East play begins. So it's not an easy road ahead. No, these first two games were supposed to be tune-ups, get the kinks out, and they're getting them out, and they're showing. Iowa definitely a tough opponent, Big Ten opponent. Notre Dame really strong. USF beat Notre Dame. Rutgers is coming back. Utah joining the Pac-12. A lot of new coaches, too, in the Big East. West Virginia with Dana Holgerson. Paul Pascaloni in Connecticut. So when it all settles, we're going to have, like, two conferences, one on the West and one in the East. Yeah, huh? it looks that way. <laughs> it looks that way. I don't know. The whole super conference idea, it's... I'm, I'm up and down on it. Just as long as the little guys like the Missouris and the Iowa States and, yeah, and the Kansas States and don't the get Kansas. Left out. Yeah. Now the Black Bears will be playing another football championship team national champion. That'll be Delaware on October the 1st. So that's a test for them in the Colonial Athletic Association. UMass jumping up in conferences. Going to be another tough opponent for them. It is second down seven as we get back to live football here at Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh. The fourth quarter is underway. Sinceri dumps it off and it's incomplete. It was intended for Hubie Graham, but no real chance that he could catch that one. Walker was putting the pressure on Sinceri defensively for Maine. Third and seven. Graham, not that time. Before he was right there to wrap him up. It was almost like he could read that one coming all the way. Chris, they did a great job of pressuring the quarterback on the ends. Cole and Alston. But he's doing a good job of checking down. And as, every, everything is fourth down territory. Fourth, fourth and ten. Sorry about that. They will not be punting unless he pooches it, which he has done Did it a couple of times last week. But no, that's going to be intercepted. No, well, that's a mistake. James was right there to Darlis James just stepped in front of it and read it all the way. Second interception of the afternoon for Sinceri. Darlos James. 
They waited on this for a while, threw a duck and just went right underneath it. Didn't even, um, Street didn't even have a chance to break on the ball. No, he was cut off completely. Cut off completely, didn't have a chance. 31 yard line. Let's see now what Maine can do. Smith rolls and throws it away. That probably one wish, slipped out of his hand, it looked like. Probably wishes he would have just kept that and ran with it because he had a lot of space out there in front of him. Both the back and the corner out was covered. You now Williams came up to apply some pressure, but the pass was overthrown, incomplete. As I said, it looked to me like it just slipped out of his hand. Second and ten. Just about a minute gone here in the fourth quarter. Well, the Panthers played that one beautifully defensively. Great call by Keith Patterson. Alexi and Donald teamed up to make the tackle. Alexi with the pick last week. Great job of coming through. I mean, we've seen the same play by, by Maine two different ways, and each time it's been stopped. And here comes Pitt showing us a little pressure. They're going to recall it, reset it. Four wideouts in the formation. It's third and 15 now after the loss of five. That's Session in motion, moving into the backfield. They look to Brown, go back to Session. And he'll be wrestled down as he fights his way across the 30 to about the 35-yard line. Session caught a touchdown pass for Maine that brought them back to 20 to 15 in this game. And then it answered with Graham's third touchdown of the afternoon to push it back to 28-15. Jones is deep. He has handled all the punt returns this afternoon for Pittsburgh. Waxman. Not a real good kick, kind of wobbly. And it takes a Panther bounce. It's in pit territory. It's down there by the Black Bears. So the Panthers go back to work with 12.33 to play in the game. It's Pittsburgh 28, Maine 15 on ESPN3. We come back. Pittsburgh has the football at the 48-yard line. Ray Graham, not much there. Alston makes the tackle. And the Panthers making a bit of a change. True freshman in the backfield with Trey Anderson. He's out of Texas, Pearl in Texas. Finds Graham in the flat. <laughs> he makes another guy miss. Looks like maybe a face mask. Coaches talk about Trey Anderson and how fun he is to watch and how fearless he is as a quarterback. Wasn't sure if he was going to get some reps today, but they really like his attitude. They like his work ethic. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask. Face mask. Defense. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Yard penalty. Automatic. Automatic. First down. And that will help the drive for the Panthers. And it stalled out just a little bit. Let's take another look. I can understand if you're missing a tackle, but at least try to attempt to make the tackle, overrunning it. And I don't really blame him for using the, the face mask because how was he going to tackle that guy? I don't know. That was Shipley who was the guilty party. Not much there for Graham up the middle. And again, it's Shipley who makes the tackle. What Pitt can really do is line up with Graham with his hand on the ground on every single play and just run right at him. Arizona has checked in as the tight end now for Pittsburgh, and some of the second-line players are getting some playing time. Fander is the player down. This is the third time here in the second half that we've had a main Black Bear player on the field. Now, do you think that they're just putting in Anderson to get some time, or do you think that they're really upset with Sinceri? Two picks, throwing it into coverage. Uh, that's a good question. Bad decisions. <laughs> It'll be, I'm sure, ask of Todd Graham after the game. Because everybody else is still in there. Still got your starting offensive line in there. You got all your playmakers in there. I 
wondering if this is a cramp. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about that. 77, Kevin Fredul are walking off. Panthers will have it second down inside the 45 at the 44 yard line. Come out with the second down eight at the main 34. 11.25 remaining in the game. Anderson goes deep, looking long and overthrown. Intended for Street. And he took a shot. And Street wasn't even looking for the ball to the last second. Probably could have adjusted his body a little bit to the outside. Now, welcome to college football. <laughs> there you go. Well, he said he was fearless. He hung in there and threw that thing down there. It is third down and eight. Rolls right, throws right, and completes the pass. That's Carswell. He is a combination, as they all are, with Graham, H back, tight end type player, and he made the catch there. Nice, easy pass, sprint to the right, easy throws into the flat. You've got a young quarterback. Make sure you have a nice, easy throw he can complete. Gives you confidence. I tell you what will give you confidence. A good running back like Ray Graham. Makes it a little easier on the QB, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the idea is to you set up the run, you set up the run, get those guys to overcommit, and then you start throwing it over their heads. It was Shipley again on the tackle defensively for the Black Bears. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Running back is Brown now instead of Ray Graham working alongside Trey Anderson. Anderson dumps it off. Brown Anderson hit as he gets inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. And the Panthers are 5 of 13 on third down. And they'll have a third and I think manageable here. Carswell, the motion man. Same play to the left. And the first down. Plays he understands, plays he knows. One of those plays that he feels good about. Every time a quarterback on those Friday meetings, the quarterback's coach will ask him, what are your favorite plays? And that seems to be one of them today. That's Zach Brown, the transfer from Wisconsin. Running it up the middle, and you can see the freshman quarterback, Trey Anderson. He's from Pearland, Texas. Getting his first taste of college football this afternoon. And back onto the field now comes Hubie Graham. Sets up as the H-back. Leads to blocking for Brown. Did he get in? Oh, it's close. It's close. Capella wrapped him up. But he's inside the one yard line. Zach Brown, good hard runner. The guy that's used to running, he came from Wisconsin. I almost felt like he put the ball across the plane before they pushed him back. It's third and goal. Penalty. He does get in. Zach Brown, his second touchdown of the season. But there is a flag on the play. And I want to say that. Offside, defense, defense. Left, end. left end, penalties to climb, touchdown. So the touchdown will stand. Panthers add to their lead, go up 34-15. Well, that's the distance they were looking for. The PAT, he missed one early, but he will not miss that one. Drills it through. 8.39 to play. Panthers go up 35-15. You're watching College Football on ESPN3, presented by Sprint. Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, and you're watching College Football on ESPN3, presented by Sprint. Sprint. 
Second touchdown of the year for Brown. The Panthers will kick it off and they've opened it up second straight game. They've scored 35 points. They've run 84 plays to 48 for Maine. That's the range that Todd Graham wanted to be in. He wanted to run 80 plus plays. Boom across the 15 to about the 17 yard line. And that's where the Black Bears will set up offensively with still eight and a half minutes to go in this football game. Always spotted at the 19 yard line. Three wide receivers come to the near side of the field. Another productive afternoon for that young man, Ray Graham. Smith completes it for a first down. Well, they're definitely not going to lay off the pedal now. I think now that Maine is in the position that they're in, obviously, they're going to try and go downfield a little more, a little faster. Well, that was complete to Session, who makes another catch. He has been busy, has a touchdown reception. First and ten. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. That's session in motion. Smith rolls, throws, catch is made. And spinning and trying to battle his way back into things there was McDonald. Coach is talking about McDonald. He's not the fastest guy, but he's the best route runner. Probably the best hands. Knows how to get open, knows how to find those little voids. Good target for Smith. Second and short for the Black Bears. Smith goes deep down the far side, overthrown. Nice tight coverage by Williams. Intended for Johnson, and it seems every week that Kwan Williams is going to be tested, and he was again on this play. He will be tested because he's young and he's inexperienced. But the coaches think that he gets better every day. He just does rookie mistakes. Third and a couple. Session shifts out of the backfield. And has enough for a first down. Session made the catch. Defensively, Jackson was there. Impressed with uh, this main offense, with their ability to keep moving the ball. I mean, they struggled in the first quarter. They've had a bunch of three and outs, but they just don't stop trying. They don't. They don't give up. Unfortunately for the Black Bears, they've not been able to stay close enough. Smith's pass is caught, and right going down at midfield is the tight end, Perillo. I think that might be Justin's first catch of the game. Justin Perillo. Talk about football smarts. They line him up everywhere. He has a lot of responsibilities, whether it be H back, slot. He, uh, he's responsible for blocking the edges. He has lots of roles. Smith pass is caught again. And right on top defensively were the Panthers. And Perillo again made the catch. That was a great job of Perillo coming downhill after he puts his foot in the ground, comes up, catches it at the highest point. Takes on senior Tristan Roberts. Third and short. Smith will try to pick it up himself, and he rolls to a first down. Oh, it's a first down for the Black Bears. Clock continues to run. They reset the chains. The Panthers that time almost jumped offside. Got to make contact. They have plenty of time to get back. Smith directing traffic again, but using a lot of the clock. 
that quick inside handoff to Hood. Drop play to 26, David Hood. Brought down by Chaz Alexi for the Panthers. It's a 20-point Pittsburgh lead. You know, last week they won 35-16. They lead 35-15 this afternoon. Another short completion. And I think it's going to be just shy of a first down as he went to Altman. There's the slant route that gave him so much trouble last week. Now they did have enough for the first down. A big afternoon for Ray Graham. Smith under pressure gets away. Picks up positive yardage. Great job by Smith once again avoiding the sack, finding a way to get out of it. Side steps, one man gets upfield, keeps the play alive. It was Lindsay who made the tackle number seven and we're seeing a lot of different bodies out there right now for Pittsburgh as they had a look at some of their players under game conditions. Inside handoff to Hood. We have a lot of depth on that defensive team especially in the front seven front four. Dave wants that what he did more than anything was recruit well for the defensive line so there's always going to be new bodies and they're fresh bodies young bodies guys that can get after the quarterback stop the run well, you saw number 91 easel part of the down lineman crew from steel valley here in the pittsburgh area a lot of these players uh christian are from the pittsburgh area homegrown smith guns it down the catch is made and it's Perillo close to the goal line. Perillo suddenly getting involved yeah. in the offense. Where, he has, where a, has he been? He hadn't caught a pass. This will be the 13th play of this drive. And again, right up the seam, beats the coverage. Great job by Smith sticking that ball in there. And Perillo at 6'4", 250, he's a load to bring down. It's first and goal from the one. And the Panthers will bring in a lot of subs bringing those big bodies all those guys that were taking a break on the bench yeah get hey. back in there <laughs> I was like what <laughs> I thought I was through for the yeah, day taking their tape off I mean you just remember what happened last week with Auburn and Utah State different situation but you don't ever want to be that team that thinks you have it before it's actually done yeah but it happens doesn't it it does and nobody learns their lesson you know, I know the fat lady isn't singing, but she's humming. But you still have to buckle up and get out there and play. Uh, she's certainly clearing her throat. Yes, That's she's a me, 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 me. <laughs> Still 3.16 to go. And there's no quit in Warren Smith. Well, they still got all their stars out there. Well, you got the, at, the, at the top of the screen, you have Maurice McDonald one-on-one -on -one with Kwan Williams. That's session in motion. It was set up in the backfield. And Smith falls down. They still get a touchdown. It was Wood who got it into the end zone. And I wonder if he got his foot stepped on by one of his linemen. No, he just I think he tri he tackled himself on yeah. that play. <laughs> That's what you call turf monster. Ate him up. I mean, unbelievable. He got the snap off though. And he got the touchdown. Harvey for the PAT. Three minutes, twelve seconds to go here in the fourth and final quarter. He booms it through. So back once again comes the main Black Bears. 35 22. Pittsburgh is in front and pretty much in control. 
Welcome back with 312 to play. I'm John Sanders along with Christian Foria. And the Panthers will get the football back. Maybe. <laughs> because the onside kick is going to come. Well, this is the key to the onside kick. You let the last guy go. You block the remaining four. Or in this case, five. And then number 87, the guy, the sure-handed guy, catches the ball. Everybody else, get a block. Don't let one guy out through the seams. Touched it. Yeah, he touched it before by 10 yards. They didn't call it. They didn't, didn't call it. It gets it at the 50. They touched it. Yeah, they're going to go bring it back to inside the 40, where the ball was touched, I believe. You notice how the coaches talked about who the best guys on the team were with their hands? Ray Graham and Mike Shanahan. Really on the field, it's a kick was illegally touched by the kicking team at the 38 yard line. First down. And he knows it. Mm, you know, he might have had a chance if he would just let it go. That's blockers out there. Well, he could have blocked Brown and yeah. let it roll off, right? First and 10. Ray Graham again, taking the handoff from the freshman Anderson. It's time for uh, Graham to take a uh, curtain call. And he'll depart as Brown checks in. Panthers looking at second down and six inside the 35 yard line. It's Brown from behind. Anderson with a play fake. Dumps it off close to another first down. That was Carazzoni who made the catch. One of the backup tight ends, and he's got enough for a first down. They'll spot it at the 27 yard line. Clock moving at 2.30 to play. Anderson looks for all of it. Street got a hand on it, but could not hang on. That was Ofori who was back there defensively. The young quarterback, Terry Anderson, taking a shot downfield. Mistimed his jump. Devin Street needs to kind of box out like our board bottles did for Maine. That's Brown again. He'll get down to about the 22 yard line. Ray Graham, 121 yards, had 201 last week. Had three touches last week. They got three more today. Inside, two minutes to play. Not much there for Brown on third and seven. Well, it's been two pretty good weeks for number one. 322 yards total. He had 920 yards last year. And he scored six touchdowns already. His field goal attempt will come from the 29-yard line. Make it a 39-yard field goal attempt. So Harper booms it up and misses. He has struggled overall. It's not, it's not a matter of the question of his leg, Christian. It's a matter of the direction that's been haunting him. Let's look ahead to what's coming up in college football tonight. There are some of the games you'll see right here on ESPN 3. So a good lineup, Christian. Florida State getting ready to play Oklahoma next week. E.J. Manuel getting his first win. How about Case Keenum coming back for a sixth year? Beating UCLA last week, threw for over 300 yards. For his career, he has 108 touchdowns. 13,896 yards. Amazing numbers, huh? I mean, another 4,000 yards, and he will be the all-time leader in passing yards as a quarterback. Smith gets another first down as he completes the short toss that time to Buttles. I'd have to think that this main team is going to beat some people and they're going to score some points. They are going to beat some people. They have a good offense. More importantly, their quarterback is just a leader. 
And I think that's the most important thing when you're picking out a quarterback is forget about arm strength, forget about how fast he can run. Do the guys follow? Do they believe in him? Can he lead you to win? Can he put you in the right play? He does all that. I'm very impressed with number eight for me. That was knocked down by Donald, and Donald kind of shaking his head, thought he should have had an interception right there. On the flip side, if you're Todd Graham, I know you're running a lot of plays, but I feel like you're, you're leaving a lot of yardage and a lot of catches and a lot of opportunities out there because guys aren't catching the ball, missed assignments, poor decisions. And since he did throw two interceptions this afternoon. Their schedule does not get any easier for him no, after this. No, it does not. Either. This Big East is getting better. They got Iowa next week. Buttles is open. He'll be wrestled out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Actually, they're going to spot it inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Yeah, we can. Uh, we might have ourselves a little uh, excitement here towards the end, John. Well, if they get this one in, and we'll see another onside kick, awesome. right? There is no quit in Maine, that's for sure. Short pass completed to 12 yard line that time. Get a timeout. Again, it's Buttles. They will use a timeout. They should have one left, right? Playing another bowl championship subdivision team, and they have battled hard from the football championship subdivision. It seems like every year they play the, the defending champion in the football championship subdivision. They have to play uh, again this year against Delaware. Yeah, the, uh, he's got the right formula, though. Uh, he's been there a long time. Uh, he's running a good offense. Uh, he knows how to what it takes to beat these bigger schools that have that are recruiting better, that are, that are getting better players in. And he, I think, he delivers his message to his players. If it wasn't for that first quarter, this game could have been a lot could have been a lot closer. Well, absolutely. And keep in mind on that opening drive by Pittsburgh, they had the running into the kicker call, which was kind of questionable, but it it certainly keyed a touchdown drive for the Panthers. Smith runs away from pressure and incomplete. Tried to go to McDonald that time, but not able to complete it. And again, pretty good pressure coming up the middle from Pittsburgh. And what what Maine needs to do is figure out a way how they can get man-to-man -man coverage so they can get the ball into one of those big tight ends or one of those speedy wide receivers. 39 seconds to play. Black Bears need to score now. Yeah, Perillo and McDonald down at the far side of the at the front at the bottom of the screen. That should be enough for a first down. The timeout again. They're going to use every ounce, every second of this clock. Johnson made the catch. Buttles has caught seven passes. And he's averaging 21 yards per catch. Here's Brown. Cannot get in. He'll be stopped at the two. Now they use the last one. Nineteen years at the helm in Orono. Quick word with the official. That's a lot of football, isn't it? His career. Probably where he got that gray hair from. <laughs> One of these bargaining with the refs. He did go back to Boston briefly after he played at Maine. And he was an assistant. He was a high school coach and an assistant at Boston College for a couple of years. There's uh, Buttles. Oh, he's Donald. been busy, huh? Yeah. And this is where you get this man-to-man -man coverage at the bottom of the screen. 
You have Johnson. And then you have Perillo in the slot. Go for the quick out. And there's Williams. So overthrown and incomplete, intended for McDonald. If you're looking for matchups, you have obviously Williams manned up. You have Perillo. I want to say that's Williams, who is their cover slash spur linebacker. And you have single coverage down at the bottom with Johnson also. Or I wouldn't be surprised if he just decided to take it on his own. Stick nod. Nope, could not hang on. Great idea. Perillo, he tried to just kind of feather it in there and he couldn't bring it down. He, Perillo ran the stick nod, fakes the out route, tries to get the linebacker to commit, but linebackers, look at Gruber, almost put the hand on it. If he would have thrown that a little bit better, he would have had a shot at it. It was Holly trailing the play defensively for Pittsburgh. So they're down to fourth down and goal. And the clock is down to nine seconds. Got one more play. Make it your best one. They got it. The touchdown pass, the third of the afternoon for Smith. He's able to find McDonald in the end zone. Coverage on the play by Hendricks, but McDonald makes the catch. There should be one more second left on the clock. They ran that last second off pretty late. McDonald, he's just keeping this play alive. Look at Smith. He's been doing it the whole game. Takes a big shot by Donald. Great catch. Okay, and you look at the coverage that was on the play by Hendricks. It wasn't that bad. No. It's... 35-28 with the PAT coming. And I think they did put one second back on the clock. Somebody's missing. Yeah, somebody's a little late. <laughs> <laughs> the extra point is up and through. So you got one second left. And well, you can't advance. An onside kick. So you can't run an onside kick play for a touchdown. Is no, that what you're saying? you can't. So <laughs> even if you get it, the game should be over. But I'll tell you what, let's give some credit to Smith and that uh, main offense. They never stopped. They never stopped. They kept pushing. And Smith. Just a gutsy kid. I mean, he's been hit a lot today. Whether he was scrambling, whether he was holding himself in the pocket before the hit came so we can get the ball off. He did a great job of managing the offense, getting everybody in the right position, making his throws. Didn't put his team in harm's way with bad throws. Well, they got off, as you mentioned, to a sluggish start. A couple of penalties early on, especially the running into the kicker penalty. That was a big play because they came out defensively. Maine came out and stopped them, forced them to punt, ran into the kicker, then put them in a fourth down situation, and they got the fourth down, and then they scored a touchdown. Well, it became a fourth, and they're going to put some more time back on the clock. It shows one second right now. And uh, Todd Graham cannot be happy about this. Again, you're going to have... Mike Shanahan and Ray Graham, who was probably just, look, Graham doesn't even have his gloves on anymore. He probably had his shoulder pads unbuckled. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't be surprised if they kicked this back the other way. But again, let the last guy go. One guy's in charge of getting the ball. You want to bounce this thing up there so it can be like a big rebound type play. And there they go, the other way. And they're off sides. The flag hit the turf. 
as you called it, they were probably offside trying to get down there, and they did go back the other way. So I'm two for two. That's right. Heads up on your part. I'm out of here. I'm done. Offside. Offside. On the kicking team, number two. Number two. Penalties decline. Five yards from the end of play. First down. Game can't end on a penalty. Take one second off the clock, make it two seconds. Yep. Okay, we'll do that. This is the best play in all of football right here, John. The victory formation. <laughs> the kneel down. Take a <laughs> knee. Have a good off season. For Pitt. They gotta get back in their books. That'll do it. It is over. The Panthers win it. Their record goes to 2-0. and oh. Coaches exchange handshakes. So do the players. Another big day for Ray Graham. Todd Graham gets the victory. He is 2-0 and oh as the head coach at the University of Pittsburgh. A beautiful Saturday afternoon here in September in downtown Pittsburgh. The Panthers get the victory. So for Christian Corey, I'm John Sanders. We say well, so long from Heinz Field. 35-29 is the final. To watch the entire game on replay, join our family of ESPN Networks. You can log on to ESPN.com. Thanks for watching. Presentation of ESPN, worldwide leader in sports.